Uh, my name is uh, Victor Cha. I'm senior advisor and career chair here at CSIS and uh, professor at Georgetown. Uh, and today um, we are here to talk about the uh, new national campaign for the Korean War National Museum. Um, <clears throat> I want to thank all of our guests who have come from, uh, from the media as well as from Washington circles. Uh, the way we'll proceed is I will um, uh, first introduce to you all of the uh, folks on our, on our it's, I hes hesitate to call it a panel because they're not going to give long prepared remarks. They're just going to say a little bit about how they think this is a great idea. Uh, and, then, uh, and then really open it up to any questions you might have. Um, and uh, I know many of, a, couple, a number of these folks are familiar to many of you uh, because of their long history and very prominent roles in Korean, um, U.S. Korea relations. Uh, but I will, um, in respect to all, introduce them um, uh, fairly thoroughly for each of them. So um, to my immediate right, uh, as many of you know, to my immediate left, <laughs> uh, sorry, to my immediate left, as all of you know, is um, Ambassador Jack Pritchard. Uh, Jack is president of the Korea Economic Institute in Washington. Um, he served as ambassador and special envoy for negotiations with North Korea and U.S. representative to Quito, the Korea Peninsula Energy Development Organization, in the George W. Bush administration from April 2001 until September 2003. Uh, prior to that, he served as Special Assistant to the President uh, for National Security Affairs and Senior Director for Asian Affairs on the National Security Council in the administration of uh, Bill Clinton. Ambassador Pritchard is a former United States Army officer and attache in Tokyo. He retired from the U.S. Army in 2000 as a colonel after serving 28 years on active duty. Uh, sitting next to him is Dennis Healy. Uh, Dennis Healy is chairman of the Korean War National Museum uh, campaign. Um, uh, Mr. Healy entered the U.S. Army uh, while he was in college, where he proudly served in the Korean War as an infantryman attached to the 728th Military Police Battalion in Seoul, Korea. Um, he and his wife, Sandra, who is also here with us today, our co-chairman of Turtle Wax Incorporated, a Chicago-based car care company. Turtle Wax is the world's largest manufacturer of car care products. Uh, the Chicago-based company controls over 60% of the U.S. car wax market and sells its products in Europe, the Pacific Basin, Central, and South America. Uh, Mr. Healy has also been involved and pledged his time to a number of different um, philanthropic causes, including the Chicago Symphony Association, Catholic Charities and Junior Achievement of Chicago. He is on the board of the USO of Illinois and has served as its chairman of the board. Um, he is also a trustee of several universities, including Northwestern, the University of St. Mary of the Lake, DePaul, the Midtown Education Foundation, and After School Matters. Um, he has served for many years on the Mercy Hospital and Evanston Northwestern Hospital Boards and has also chaired Options for People, which is a nonprofit dedicated to bringing the long-term unemployed uh, into the workforce. Um, sitting next to Mr. Healy is Ambassador Tom Hubbard. Um, Ambassador Hubbard is currently Senior Director for Asia at McClarty Associates, a strategic consulting firm based in Washington, D.C. He manages the firm's work throughout Asia, including its employees and advisors stationed in Hong Kong, Japan, Philippines and China. Um, as you all know, Ambassador Hubbard served as the U.S. Ambassador to South Korea from 2001 to 2004, and before that as Ambassador to the Philippines from 1996 to 2000. Ambassador Hubbard also currently serves as Chairman of the Korea Society in New York City uh, and sits on numerous additional advisory boards. Uh, sitting next to him is General John Talelli. Uh, General Talelli is currently empl employed with Cyprus International Incorporated in Alexandria, Virginia as its chairman and chief executive officer. Uh, General Talelli's last active du duty assignment was as commander-in-chief of United Nations Command, Republic of Korea, United States Combined Forces Command, 
United States Forces Korea, where he commanded the largest standing joint and coalition force in the world, comprising over 650,000 soldier, soldiers, sailmen, sailors, airmen, and Marines. Uh, General Talelli, uh, upon his retirement for the, from the United States Army, was appointed as President and Chief Executive Officer of USO Worldwide Operations. Um, something that I didn't know about him, but given my interest in sports and politics, uh, I did not know that he also served in 95-96 when he was commander of United States Army Forces Command. He was responsible for providing security at the 26th Summer Olympics uh, in, in Atlanta, Georgia. General Talelli's military career includes two tours in Vietnam and four tours in Germany. His combat tours include assignments as a company commander and district senior advisor in Vietnam and commanding general of the 1st Cavalry Division during Desert Shield and Desert Storm. And then sitting next to uh, General Talelli is Elise Bartholome. Elise joined the Korean War National Museum as the National Campaign Director in September of 2010 with over 20 years of national development experience in nonprofit and political campaigns and organizations. Her uh, professional experience includes uh, Director of Special Events for the Central Park Conservancy, Deputy National Finance um, uh, uh, Director for Jack Kemp's presidential campaign, responsible for major donor and event activities, Director of Development for the Latin School of Chicago and Ballet Chicago, uh, as well as Executive Director of the Illinois Republican State Finance Committee uh, and a number of other uh, very important posts. So we are um, very fortunate to have brought this group together today um, to offer their thoughts about uh, the idea of creating this new Korean War uh, National Museum. Um, and I, I guess, um, uh, Dennis, would you like to start? or? Yes, to offer some initial yes, sir. comments? If you could just turn on your mic. Ah. Uh, welcome, everybody, and thanks for your support and interest in coming here. Uh, I am a representative of the Korean War veterans here. Uh, they're, they're hard to find. Um, when some of the people ask me why the Korean War National Museum, I'd rather answer the question with another question, say, why the Korean War? What was the Korean War? What was the Korean War about? Why did it happen? And what are the consequences of that war coming right after the Second World War, four years after? And I think everybody in this room knows what that was about. It's not just about this, uh, the freedom of the South Korean people who were invaded from the North with the help, and then with the help of the Chinese, but what happened to them afterwards and what happened to that small country under 50 million people, which is now at the 12th largest 12th largest economy in the world. In uh, the 50s, when I left there, it was a kind of a shambles. Um, that's an understatement. But then thousands and thousands of, of Korean people, civilians alone who were killed in that thing and, and slaughtered. And what is it's now a pinnacle of, of a friendship for the United States and freedom in that whole region. If you look at that map, it's a very outstanding piece of land and piece of territory. Uh, that's what it's about. Uh, it's a work of, ha of heart. People at, at my age, uh, in June 25th, 1950, I graduated from high school. Uh, a class of uh, 750 young men from Cardinal Hayes High School in the Bronx. All, all draft age. The draft was on. Um, and everybody went, and they went happily. There was no big fighting or discussion about it. They just got their notices, and they went. Some of our friends who went, who couldn't go for medical reasons, were, would, would, be, were, would go back to the board every six months and try to get into the army because they felt like they were left out. Um, so that's my interest. My interest is my brother was there, my two cousins were there, my, you know, my whole classmates, everybody. Everybody I knew in that area went to Korea. If not, they went to someplace lucky like Alaska or Germany or someplace. So my interest is in twofold, in the, the, the history of, of the war and what it has done and what it means. And second, all those people who served in that war who have never been recognized. They all, most of them feel left out. Uh, they, weren't, they weren't maligned like the Vietnam ones at the beginning. 
but they were never recognized. They felt they had done something and they come back and nobody even knew they were there. And what, where was Korea and what was it about? Who cares? Uh, and that's what I'm really interested in. Thank you. Well, thank you, Dennis. Um, uh, Ambassador Pritchard, would you like to say a few words? Thank you, Victor. I, I'm very pleased to be here today. I'm, there's an obvious connection that I have with Korea, but like many Americans, uh, we have connections that go far deeper to the Korean War. Both my father and father-in-law fought in the Korean War. Um, and I have uh, always wanted to be able to visit some place and look at uh, uh, information about what they did uh, there. Uh, but more than that, I think that there is a nobility of the cause we had during the Korean War that needs to be justly remembered on a continuing basis. The success of Korea as a democracy and our, our ally is just, you know, it, it is so profound. Uh, I was struck when I first came to KEI about six years ago. KEI at that time had and still does a program in which we put the Korean ambassador to the United States and the U.S. ambassador to Korea together and travel throughout the United States. And on that very first introduction to this uh, program, uh, the Korean ambassador, Lee tae you know, he told us, I want Korean War veterans at every place we go. Uh, if it's at a dinner, we'll pay for it. Uh, and he began every single comment uh, about current issues with a statement that said to the veterans, thank you. The Korea that we know today would not have been possible had it not been for your sacrifices as young men so many years ago for a people that you never knew. And, and, I, and this was not something that, uh, a talking point, it was extremely profound and it stuck with me. And, and it made me think in terms of what we did then, what we do continuing today. And I take great pride in the Americans who continue to serve in Korea. You know, we have an embodiment of the very best here today with us in terms of General John Talele. Well, my father had a second tour in Korea when I was a senior in high school. So while I missed his presence, it, you know, as I look back as, a more, as an older person now, I'm extraordinarily proud of his two tours, one in combat and one later uh, to, to maintain the peace. And so the opportunity for a museum that is different from the terrific Korean War memorial that we have uh, on the mall uh, gives an opportunity for, we hope, um, our veterans to share their stories, uh, to educate our youth, and to continue a, a legacy of our alliance with Korea through a, a, a museum that is significantly uh, better than anything else that we could do. So thank you for coming today. Thank you, Jack, for those very nice remarks. Um, Ambassador Hubbard. Thank you, Victor. Uh, I'm uh, very pleased to join uh, my uh, colleagues today in, in, uh, in kind of opening a broad public discussion of the, uh, the plans that, that are underway to uh, create a, a Korean War Museum. I think uh, Elise or, or someone will, will, will be happy to answer your questions about where, what, and when uh, in the question and answer session. I, I, uh, but as chairman of the uh, Korea Society in New York, I, I'm pleased that uh, this museum will be uh, joining us in New York, and, and we certainly hope that we'll be close partners in, in, uh, in the years to come. Uh, the uh, Korean War story is, is one that too many, uh, too few Americans know about. And I think increasingly, younger Koreans also uh, don't know that much about uh, the Korean War. And I, I think it is, uh, when I first heard from Dennis Healy and Elise about this plan, I, I said, my gosh, isn't there one already? And why not? Uh, and I, I do think this is a, an idea whose time has come. It will need a lot of support, but we should, um, should move forward. I had the honor of being ambassador to Korea during several events uh, in which we, uh, we had cause to think about the Korean War in, in some depth, particularly the, uh, the 50th anniversary of the, uh, of the armistice. Uh, 
which uh, the, the leading U.S. representative was, uh, was uh, former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger. I spent several days with him attending events. And, and the most moving uh, for me was, uh, was the, an event that I hosted in my, my residence uh, for uh, 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 some of the very numerous American veterans who, who went back to Korea for that purpose. Uh, a, um, a, uh, various groups in Korea were generous enough to, uh, to invite uh, Americans over for that. Uh, I had a hundred of them uh, in my residence because we, we invited two from, from, from each state. And I almost universally heard from them uh, what Mr. Healy just said, that none of them could have imagined uh, when they were fighting in Korea uh, that they would see a, uh, a South Korea uh, like it is today and a Seoul like it is today. Many of these people, of course, come from places that are far less developed than, than Seoul is now, but universally th said it was all worth it. We're really proud that, that our effort contributed to that. And I, uh, I, I, I hope this museum uh, will become a place for veterans to gather. I hope that, uh, that many Korean Korean War veterans will, will find occasion to both contribute to the museum and uh, their stories and their, their, uh, their perspectives and, and also to find it as, as moving as I'm, I'm sure the uh, American uh, veterans will. So I, I, I hope you will all join us in supporting this worthy project. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador Hubbard. Uh, General Tolelli. Uh, first, I'd like to introduce General and Mrs. Warner a tremendous uh, leader in our army and Korean War vet who sacrificed for this great nation many, many years. And General Warner, thanks for being here today. It's, it's an honor. Uh, I am not a Korean War vet, but I'm honored to be part of this uh, panel and, and those who are fostering this uh, wonderful initi initiative. Uh, first, uh, for my Korean friends here, they know I love Korea and I love the Korean people. And in my mind's eye, this museum will demonstrate to the world that the Korean-U.S. alliance is the best in the world. And it's a unique alliance. And it shows clearly in my mind's eye, as Mr. Healy and others have said, that one, democracy wins out every time. Democracy wins out every time. And this museum will be a tribute to that. For those of you who have been in Korea and I think about it when I served there. Every time I would look at the beautiful forests and the beautiful green pastures, the verdant fields in the Republic of Korea, I know that those fields and forested forests were nurtured by the blood and by the sweat of Koreans, Americans, and others who fought in that great country for freedom. And it truly is a tribute to not only the Koreans and the Americans, but all those nations that did so much for freedom and democracy. You know, Dennis said it earlier. They went to a place they did not know for a people they, or for a place they'd not been for people they did not know. And that's what freedom and democracy is all about. So in that context, I like this quote because I think it's very important. It's a quote by George Washington, and I'll, I'll end it with a question. And George Washington said that the willingness with which our young people are likely to serve in any war shall be directly proportional to how they perceive the veterans of earlier wars were treated and appreciated by their nation. So this is a time. So the question is, if not now, when? This no longer should be a forgotten war, a forgotten place, forgotten veterans. It's time for us as a nation in partnership with the Republic of Korea and all of those people who understand and appreciate the democracy of this great nation, the Republic of Korea, to sign up and support this effort. Thank you. Uh, thank you, General Tully. I'm going to go to Elise in a, in a minute to give us the who, what, when, where, and how. But let me just add um, my voice of support for what I think is a fantastic cause. The, um, you know, when I think, when, 
when I first heard about this movement, I thought of two things. The first was that, you know, this is a war museum that, um, um, among other things, will also celebrate the alliance. Uh, because when you think about how the relationship between the United States and the Republic of Korea was, uh, Korea was forged, it was, you know, truly a sort of quintessential marriage of convenience. As, as a number of panelists had said, among people who knew nothing of each other, largely because they faced an immediate external threat. Um, but over the years, as we've seen, this alliance has changed dramatically. Uh, it, has, it has taken on a quality uh, where it has become a, a normative good in many ways. It is a good in and of itself, the U.S.-Korea alliance, because of its common values, uh, because of the very close partnerships and relationships between the people, the businesses, and, and the political leaders. Um, and so this museum is, will not simply be to remember a war, but it will also be, it will also tell many about how this alliance, which is, you know, in many ways a global partnership today, where it all, where it all started. And I think that's very important. The second thing I would say, and this is a more of a personal story, is um, um, when I first spoke with Dennis and Elise about this, um, it reminded me of a, um, of a moment for myself. When I was working um, at the White House, one of the last things I had to do before I left in 2007 was take a trip to North Korea with a delegation uh, to negotiate the return of remains um, of um, American soldiers that had been killed in the war. We brought back six sets of remains, three of which were positively identified. And um, when uh, my family and I, my two boys and I were in Hawaii, we went to the Punchbowl Cemetery in Honolulu. And there they have a wall of all of the, uh, uh, separated by war, of all of the soldiers who were uh, uh, missing in action. And we looked up the names of the three soldiers who, whose, ID, whose uh, remains we positively identified. Um, and so my, the first thing my kids asked was, well, why are those names still up there? And so we found, we, uh, we found out from the people there about how they record um, uh, identified remains. And then the second thing my two boys asked was, well, you know, is there a museum that we can go to, you know, when we get back to the mainland where we can look at more about this stuff? And I thought, you know, I don't think there is. Right? And um, so I agree entirely that it is, this is for celebrating and remembering um, the work of veterans, but I also think it's for the next generation. It's for children and others to, to learn and understand about um, uh, and bring to life this history, this very successful history uh, of the U.S.-Korea relationship. Um, so with that, uh, we will go to the person who really knows what's going on, and that is Elise Bartholomew. If you'd like to make a few comments, we'd be happy to hear them. Victor, first of all, we'd like to thank you and CSIS for hosting this event. It's a very important event in our development and as we look toward going to Korea in October with General Tulele, Dennis Healy, and myself to introduce the mission to government officials, educators, and military officials and business leaders over there. I also want to thank Marie Dumond and Barbara Kim who have been so helpful in putting this together as well as Juliet Cho. Uh, I want to take the opportunity to introduce our uh, president, Tony Enrietto, who's standing by the door in the back, who joined us in May. He was running the USO in Illinois, and we're very happy to have his participation. I also want to introduce Admiral Carey, who is the other member of our National Advisory Council uh, that is here in addition to General Warner. Um, we um, look forward to having a collaboration between the United States and Republic of Korea in working on this effort to bring the museum to fruition in the lifetime of many Korean War vets. We are looking to New York as our home, and we are delighted today that Senators Schumer and Gillibrand are issuing a joint statement of support to have the Korean War National Museum in New York City. Uh, we will be working with the mayor's office and other leaders, and we are very, very happy to have the support of uh, Consul General Ambassador Young Muk Kim in New York, who has been an enormous support and uh, guide as well. 
Uh, we have the support of the Korean War Veterans Association nationally as well as New York State, the United War Veterans Council. They have all strongly encouraged us to put the museum in New York and are offering their ongoing help. Um, we are looking for locations in New York as we speak and uh, considering our options there. And we are looking to build national leadership and international leadership to help launch this national and international campaign. Um, that's pretty much it. Oh, um, and you have a press kit that I think in, will give you in depth what we are looking to provide as far as the museum. As uh, Victor said, not only is it going to be about the ward, but we, be we, we believe it is a testament to the relationship between the United States and Republic of Korea. And it will certainly address the tremendous transformation that has occurred in Korea since the war ended and the lasting legacy of peace and democracy that exists today. It will educate generations about the war, the beginning of the Cold War, and um, will be a repository, which we have been told doesn't really exist, for information about the war and um, an opportunity for academics around the world, as well as students, to exchange information and have dialogue. The, thanks, Elise. Uh, the, the one other thing that I would add is that th this point about it's serving an education purpose for the American public more generally about Korea and, it, and the success story behind Korea, I think is very important. We did a study here at CSIS in, in cooperation with the Chicago Council on Global Affairs last year um, that surveyed the American public on Korea. I think um, some of you may have been to our rollout of that study last, uh, last year. And, and we found two things. One of them was that the general um, uh, American view, and we used a very wide sample, twice the size of Gallup across all, uh, across all income levels and, and uh, uh, education levels. The overall impression of Korea among Americans these days was actually very positive, extremely positive. And they saw the relationship for SART as a long-term relationship, even after the, um, the question of North Korea is resolved. But the other thing that our study also found was while there was very positive feelings towards Korea, um, there was really what, what pollsters call um, uh, basic knowledge questions. There was, Americans polled very poorly in terms of basic knowledge questions about Korea. If they were confronted with questions about, you know, do you think uh, the U.S.-Korea alliance should outlast, outlast uh, North Korea, they all answered yes. But when they were asked basic knowledge questions about Korea, Americans po polled very poorly. Basic questions about how do you code South Korea, is it a liberal democracy? Is it a soft authoritarian country? Um, what is the predominant religion in Korea? Is it Buddhism? Is it Christianity? Americans polled not very well. So um, having a museum like this, which is both about the war, but also talks about the evolution of the U.S.-Korea relationship, I think is very important to address this soft underbelly of, of, of American understanding about Korea, and I think that is also a very important, uh, um, um, a very important uh, way to promote the longevity of the U.S.-Korea uh, relationship. Um, so with that, uh, we'd like to open it up to any questions or comments that people might have. Uh, please feel free to just, we don't have any tent cards for you, so just raise your hands. Um, I should also introduce Bill Taylor here. Bill Taylor is a longtime senior advisor uh, here at the Center for uh, Strategic and International Studies um, and, um, and uh, a veteran himself yes, of the war. Um, if you could just, uh, it, just tell us where you're from, and we'd be happy to take any questions. And any question you like, it's from very specific things to more general things, would be, would be welcome. Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Jim Carey. Uh, as you can probably tell, I'm not the actor. Uh, I would just like to, I don't have so much a question as a comment. Uh, I would like to thank everyone, all of you and everyone else in this room who was involved in this. Uh, I think it's long overdue. I love the uh, theme, No Longer Forgotten because 
people that I grew up with who fought in Korea. I get the sense that some of them have been forgotten, even though we have a memorial down in the mall. And so I just, I really compliment Dennis Healy and all of you in front of the room for what you're doing and everyone else here who is involved. Uh, I have a frustration in that as, as uh, Mr. Chow was saying, this is, this is the result of the Korean American friendship is a tremendous success story. Uh, you mentioned the 12th largest economy in the world is now South Korea. That, that, that and our friendship and all we've been able to do for each other, I think is a tremendous success and it's something that needs to be more celebrated and yet there's not, there doesn't seem to be a focal point to do that. And I think this museum is gonna be a focal point, not only to remember those who, who, so they are no longer forgotten, but to celebrate that success. Because it's a beacon, if the whole world will just pause for a minute and take a look at what has been accomplished between uh, the Koreans and the Americans, it's, it's incredible. It's a beacon and an example for the whole world to take a look at. And in a world where things don't always seem to work out right, this is a tremendous success. So I just compliment everyone here on what we're trying to do and you have my commitment to do everything I can to help you. Thank you. Uh, opportunities also to work with North Koreans. Um, it is kind of interesting that my family and I had seven hours with Kim Do Song personally, not with big audiences and so on. We got to know some North Koreans fairly well, I think. I, I picked up something about the introduction here. As this museum, you're, you're conceiving it as having an active function, an educational function, not just a place where its artifacts are laid out, but where you want to accomplish something. I think one of the things the, the uh, museum could do is to foster debate. And I've got a reason for that. I had years as director of debate at West Point, and I coached debate here, a debate clinic for our interns. There is not a history of the Korean War. There are many histories of the Korean War. Which are the right ones? Which are the better ones? Which are the more meaningful ones? Um, the museum could have an educational function in sponsoring debates about lots of different things. But I think the idea is marvelous and the presentation just leave my poor old brain to th thinking, my God, what you could do with what you're talking about. It's marvelous. Thanks. Thank you, Bill. Uh, yes, Lauren. Uh, hi, I'm Lauren Magahi. I'm a staff reporter at the Asahi Shinbun. It's a Japanese newspaper. Um, I had a couple of questions, uh, just one logistical one. The time frame, uh, I know that, uh, Ms. Bartholomew, you said you want to roll this out within the lifetime of Korean vets. What does that mean? Are we looking at five years, ten years? Uh, and then also, just more broadly, the Korean War Memorial here in D.C. is probably my favorite because it's so poignant. It's, it's kind of haunting in a way. It's not this big grandiose thing. It's very personal. So how would you bring that kind of feeling to the museum? It says here, uh, interactive experience, that kind of thing. So what kind of nascent ideas do you have about a more interactive, personal way that the museum can, can bring that feeling to people? refer to um, our president, Tony Enrietto, who's in the back to answer. I'm, my focus is development, and his focus is the substance of the museum. So. I, I just have a question. Um, usually loud. Sir, by the way, thank you for the West Point piece. Being a, a West Point graduate, graduate, I appreciate everything you did there, sir. Um, when we do look at it, it's a very tough question, I think. Um, there's two parts to it. There's obviously, as, as Elise said, we're currently looking at different site locations. Um, most important, though, is to start to showcase these artifacts today. And the concept of a digital museum being rolled out um, 
by the middle of next year is a way that we can start to present these artifacts and allow people to enjoy them and start some of the conversations I think that, that you, sir, Mr. Taylor, are identified are critical to this. Can, can I just help, just help amplify that? That my favorite memorial in town is also the Korean War Memorial. And, and what you're looking at are the faces of the Korean War veterans. And I think as, as I have spoken to Dennis, who's our chairman, the highlight of the, the heroes and the faces of the Korean War, the Medal of Honor winners, which are numerous, the soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines who not only perished but fought, are going to be highlighted not only interactively, but I think through photo displays and emotion. And I think that's the key to all of this. It's the emotion that attracts it. And I think Dennett, I think Tony has it exactly right. We're going to we're going to start out slow, but we're going to build this to a world-class museum because our veterans deserve it. If you want to read something really interesting, go to the website and put in Korean War Medal of Honor winners. And you look at their stories and you compare that to any of the Medal of Honor winners that we have in the past, present, or during that war itself. Heroism that in probably the worst fighting conditions that man has ever known. I have questions. Uh, I'm Young Cho, uh, Cho uh, Dongha Ilbo Daily Newspaper in Korea. I, I'm wondering uh, how uh, much money will be needed to complete uh, this museum and how can you uh, have funding um, from the sources? Um, what kind of source do you, do you uh, think about and uh, do you have any uh, concrete plans on that? Did you hear that, Tony? I, I did, sir. <laughs> I'd like to add as far as where the funding will come from is we currently have 30,000 active donors around the country that have made a contribution to the museum. In the last six years there have been 104,000 donations. Uh, part of our program is a direct mail program, but what we are really doing here today is launching a capital campaign which seeks major donor support both from a corporate standpoint as well as individuals. And this would be in Korea as well as the United States. We're looking for the U.S. business community to get behind this, and we are hoping to have the support of uh, Korean businesses as well. The, uh, one gratifying experience I've had uh, in this, in, in only about, I don't know, 12, 14 months, is that I have yet to come across anybody who gave me a flat no. 
when I asked him to go on a board of advisors, and you can look at that list, I hope we have one here, uh, every one of those people said yes. They're interested. They're surprised there was not one before. When you get into the veterans, which, uh, which is my, my love, is that it's very lonely standing there saying, I am a Korean War veteran, and I'm the chairman of this. And I look around, you know, there's, where are the other guys? You know, what happened to them? Uh, they haven't been approached. And, we've, uh, and this man we have up in Buffalo now, uh, and he never thought about it, never heard about it. And he immediately said yes, flew down to Chicago, came out of Buffalo, flew down to Chicago, we had lunch together. He put a check on our hand, uh, gave us all kinds of advice, what he wants to do and how much contacts he has. And I'll feel like I, you know, it's, uh, there's only few of us in this world who are immortal. Just a couple of I see here are immortal. <laughs> Uh, so you have to have other people standing next to you. So if one guy falls, there's a few other, like the service, there's a few other guys around who can step up and help with this thing. And, and that's my concentration now for the next year, to end up with, uh, we, we figure a minimum of eight guys behind me, uh, nine, nine to 10 guys are standing up there, all of substance, all who are willing to pick up the, 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 the shovels and work on this project. And I'm, I'm, of course I'm the eternal optimist, so I, I, I know that's gonna happen. Uh, we have uh, met with uh, the defense attache here in uh, Washington, uh, General Lee. We have met with uh, Ambassador Kim in the U U.S. Consulate in uh, New York City and part of our trip to Korea to affirm that this is a, a real project uh, will be to meet with the various ministers, the Minister of uh, Patriot and Veterans Affairs, uh, hopefully the Minister of National Defense, uh, which I will see during the Seoul uh, Air Show, and others to garner support. At the same time, we have been advised to meet with uh, several National Assemblymen who have interest in this. We believe, and it's a belief at this point, that this is a partnership with the Republic of Korea. We believe that uh, when allies as strong as we have been and when American and Korean blood has been shed together in many places that to get Korean government support will not be difficult and the purpose of our trip in October is to solidify the the support with the Korean government Korean industry Korean friends who we know in our heart because this is an affair of the heart it is, not, it is not going out to get money. It's an affair of the heart that we will repay the blood shed for Korea by putting a museum that is a testament today to them and a future educational opportunity for our children, both Republic of Korea and the United States. So we're building this partnership. This is a kickoff. We're not looking back, we're looking forward as we, and we're getting lots of help. I will tell you, we're getting lots of help from the, the Korean embassy here, we're getting lots of help in putting us in the right direction. Okay, would, um, Elise, would you like to say anything, anything else in closing? Any other information? When are you planning to go to Seoul? Uh, we are going on the 20th, 20th of October, and um, General Talele is leading us through uh, the um, meetings, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we look forward to it. How's your Korean, General? Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> 
we have to end every one of these conferences with two words. And this epitomizes what your question is, and that's kachi kachi da. We, <laughs> we, 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 go, we go together, okay? We go together on this project. I thought nobody had mentioned yet, you know, there are 22 other countries involved in this war. Uh, mm. And we know, we know the big ones, Great Britain, etc. And uh, I happen to be of Irish background, and I'm a member of the American Island Fund, and I know the people well, and I've just met with them in New York. Uh, the Irish, were not, Irish government and army was not in that war, but many, many, many Irishmen were in that war, because the Irishmen staffed the British Army for a lot of reasons. Uh, and, and a lot of them came, we have a, there's a memorial in a County Kerry I just saw last, last two months ago, uh, for the 212 Irish citizens who died in Korea while fighting in the American Army. Uh, 212 of them. Now that's so far, I haven't researched that any further, but I'm sure there are more uh, people stopped. So what I, the point of that is that when we, we have their support put a, a pavilion of some sort in the, in, the, uh, in the museum that talks about that little piece. But that leads into then what about the British and how many British uh, soldiers died there and how many uh, Dutch people, how many uh, Thailand, there's a whole list of uh, Australians and New Zealand, uh, the whole list of 22 countries. And should each of those people, that's a piece of history that's lost, should each of those countries have a piece of that museum? And what did their countries do for it? Everything from medical aid to, to the logistics to actual combat. So uh, th this story gets endless as you go down, down the line. It's an emo enormous historical story, enormous. I, I, it's an enormous historical story and it's a very important educational tool, I think, for the general American public. As, as all of you know, there is a Korean War Museum in Seoul across from the Ministry of National Defense, which is huge and it's fantastic. Um, but not many Americans see it. Um, whereas one in New York, um, uh, with the sort of traffic that comes through New York City or, or, or this, this New York State is just a fantastic place to have something like this, which will um, really give generations an opportunity to learn, generations of Americans uh, the opportunity to learn a great deal about Korea. I mean, simply a picture of Seoul in 1950 and it today is probably something that many Americans have never seen or never even thought about. And a museum like this would offer that opportunity. Um, so I think it's a fantastic project and, um, and uh, I wish them all the best in their trip to Seoul uh, next month. So. Um, so thank you all for coming. Uh, this is all the time we have, so thank you all for coming. And if you have any other questions, please free, feel free to come up and talk to us individually. Thank you. Thank you.